Right, so we're having a look at putting a new set of cleats on your cycling shoes. Whether you've got yourself a new set of shoes and you want to fit them for the first time, line them up properly, or the shoes you're currently riding with and the cleats have worn out, worn down, and you want to put a new set on, that's a good idea. So, amongst cleats on the market, two most outstanding, mostly used ones on the market are the look system, which is that, a large plastic cleat with three bolts, which is what we're looking at in this video, and Shimano SPD system, that's it there, mostly for mountain bike riding, but can also be used on the road, a small metal cleat. Uh, it's important to have your cleat lined up properly for maximum pedaling efficiency and no biomechanical injuries. So let's go ahead and have a look at how to set the cleat up correctly. So the first thing to do is with all six of the bolts is to get some grease and grease the threads on there. Not too thickly, just a nice thin coat. With the washers, um, if you look really, really carefully, you'll see on one side it's like the back, it's fairly flat with a f sharp edge. The other side is flat with a roundedish sort of edge, it's sort of a softer. So I put the softer edge and side outwards, the uh, sharper edge on the inside. So you put all three of your washers in place it on the shoe and just put the screws in. So put your shoe on and do it up. Fairly firm. Now you can feel with your fingers on the side of your foot or the shoe the outermost protrudence of your foot, the bit that sticks out the most. When you find it, approximate where the, the centre of it is, where it sticks out the absolute most. Put a little line with a pencil on your shoe. Look at that. This is the inside of the shoe. Okay, so now if you have a look at the cleat itself, there's a line on the cleat, if you can see here, just right there. That mark shows where the dead center of the axle is. As you clip in to your pedal, that line will always be directly over the axle on your pedal. So, the mark on your shoe where the bony protrudence is on your foot marks the center of the ball of your foot. That would be nice to have that directly over the pedal axle. And so, as you can see, there's the mark I put on the shoe, and it's pretty close to over the mark on the cleat. So if you can aim to do that to start with, you're on your way. So once you've um, lined up your line on the cleat and the shoe, now you look at the cleat directly this way, and you imagine a line in the centre of your toe up here, and the centre of the heel here, all the way through, a centre line and the cleat should be approximately along, parallel to that line or the line run through the cleat. So once you've found that and your cleat's aligned with that line then tighten the bolts up. Quite tight. Now use a torque wrench set it to about five and a half to six Newton meters with your three millimeter Allen on the end, and then just go around again, make sure it's even. And that's it. Now you repeat the same with your other shoe. So hop onto your bike and clip into your pedals and give your cranks a bit of a spin.
and looking directly down to your shoes, note the distance between your heel and the crank. Here you can see the distance is about three and a half centimeters. That's my left shoe. And looking over to the right, it's about the same, three and a half centimeters. We aim to get them about equal. That's the ideal situation. Please note, this is a textbook setup, assuming that you are biomechanically identical on both your left and the right side of your body. To complete this setup for you as an individual, go to part two of this video series called Biomechanics and make the adjustments if needed. When clipped into your look pedal, you'll notice that you have a bit of heel in and heel out play. This is called the arc. Listen carefully as I move this shoe in the pedal, you can hear the limits of the arc. Ideally, as you pedal, your foot floats in the arc without hitting the outer limits. The size of the arc depends upon the cleat that you are using. A red cleat, for instance, is 9 degrees, a grey cleat is 4.5 degrees, or the black cleat allows no movement whatsoever. Nothing wears out plastic cleats more than walking around in them. So these cleats aren't really designed for walking around, only very minimal if you have to. You also might find that your left cleat has worn out more than your right cleat if you're a right-handed person. And the reason for that is if you're stopped somewhere, you're more likely when you clip out to put your left foot down. So your right foot is still clipped in, and your, right, your left foot is on the ground. And while it's on the ground, you're moving a bit, you're twisting a bit, and you're wearing that cleat out. And every time you do that, it's going to wear that little bit more. So don't be surprised if one cleat has worn more than the other. If you're right-handed, it's more likely going to be your left cleat. <clears throat> okay, here's the shoe with the cleat in question. There it is. Um, doesn't mean much. It's rather worn. It's done a lot of uh, miles on the bike. Here's a new one and an old one. If you compare the tongue at the front, which clips into your look pedal, compare that to the new one, the thickness, uh, probably difficult to see, but it's less than half the thickness of a new one. So you've got to ask yourself, do you trust yourself riding on half a thickness, a piece of plastic on your look cleat into the pedal? Remembering, if you're riding and that comes out, the brakes off, then you could have an accident. So safety in mind, we're going to replace them. So first thing first, you've got two cleats to replace. You're going to want to put your new cleat in exactly the same position as your old cleat and the reason is biomechanical biomechanical reasons um, so what you got to do is somehow mark where your old cleat is so that when you put your new cleat in you can mark, align it exactly right and um, then you can do the, the bolts up so what we're going to do is use a pencil this is a rather dark pencil 2B um, and just going to sketch around the cleat with the pencil where you can. I've already done this, so I'm just showing you. So you go around the cleat with the pencil. Um, if you want, you could probably use a texture of some kind, I'm not sure. But remember, the sole of the shoe is probably going to be dark, as long as you can see the outline fairly clear. So, underneath here you'll find you can either use a 3mm allen key to undo the cleat bolt or you can use a flat head screwdriver. Okay, always remember to give you sure a bit of a clean. You can definitely see the outline there of the old cleat. I can see it anyhow, I'm not sure if you can see this, the lead pencil line. Around there. Discard your old cleat and bolts and nuts. You're not going to use them. Why would you when you've got a nice new set? Uh, would be handy though to keep uh, the nuts and bolts just in case, especially the washers, but definitely rely on new ones. 
grease all the bolt threads. Put the washers in their spots. Put the cleat on the shoe. Bolts in and start tightening them up. Okay, when you've got all them in, it's nice and loose. You can probably just do them up a little bit more. Not too much. Make sure the cleat can still move a bit. Now you line up the cleat with the line that you've marked on the shoe. When you're getting really close to the marks, give it a little bit more of a tighten, but not too tight. And then if you find that this needs to make a little bit of an adjustment, knock one side or the other, you can get a small hammer and just tap it over to wherever you want to so it's exactly right. Once you're happy with the cleat position, go around and tighten the bolts a bit more. Now use a torque wrench. Set it to about five and a half to six newton meters with your three millimeter allen on the end, and then just go around again, make sure it's even. There she goes. And that's it. Now you repeat the same with your other shoe.